Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking about the Video Village, the private area where the director, producers, um, sometimes the script supervisor, watch what's happening as they're filming it. So way back in the day, uh, before Video Assist and before um, Video Tap onto 35mm film cameras, the director used to stand next to the camera and guess what the uh, image looked like uh, that they were capturing and he would only see um, what was shot the day after once the film had been developed in a process called rushes. It left a lot to the imagination and the director had to put a lot more trust in the cinematographer. Uh, maybe they could like look through the um, eyepiece and check the frame beforehand but mainly it was up to the DOP to deliver on what the director wanted. Nowadays, of course, shooting on a digital cinema camera, you have an SDI out, you have wireless video, and you're able to watch exactly what the um, camera is shooting as it's shooting it. Now, smaller sets, it's fine for the director to look over the DP's shoulder, though it's not something that I particularly like doing. Other sets have an individual director's monitor, um, sort of a you know, a little seven or maybe 10 inch handheld monitor that's fed into the wireless signal from the camera and they can see what's happening. They can stand next to the DP still, they can still check their, um, check their frame and they can be there available for the actors. On multi-camera shoots and more complicated shoots, usually you set up a thing called a video village, which is a 15 to 20 inch um, display that is either directly fed into the camera through SDI or usually using some kind of wireless video transmission system that's you know kind of at the other side of the room or down the hall or somewhere that the director can watch what's been shot on multiple cameras at the same time on a big enough screen that they can see performance, they can see what's in focus, they can see what's dark and what's light. Basically just kind of be the first audience for the film as it's been shot. It used to be that Flanders Scientific and Panasonic and Sony all had um, production monitors that were you know, $5,000 and up um, that would appear on TV commercial sets and some big Hollywood movie sets. The idea being that when a lot of money is at stake, it's not just the director that needs to see what's being shot. It's usually the producers, the client, um, and it's hard to ask them to like look into a tiny little monitor and guess what the final image will look like. Over the past few years, uh, quite a few different companies have come up with between 15 and 20 inch monitors that give a really beautiful um, 1080 or higher image um, that lets you know either one person, the director, see what's being shot on a large screen or an entire group of people be they clients or producers, the kind of people that I talked about before. Anyone who has veto power over the image, it's much better that they see it as it's being shot and change what they want to change than waiting until you get into the editing room or God forbid, present it to the client and the client says, no, that's the wrong type of can or that's the, the car. We don't like the car from the side, any of those things. You get the client to come on set, you get the, the producers to come on set and you know, watch what's being shot. Only in the last couple of months have I finally put together um, a video village that I'm happy with and I really enjoy using. I don't always use it on set. Um, maybe I watch it as we're lighting or setting up. Um, often I stand, still stand next to the camera so I can sort of see and be there for the actors um, because, you know, Usually this is an amazing thing taking place. I don't want to be down the hall from it. I want to be right there watching it. But it is a really great tool and there are a bunch of monitors now that really put this in the realm of possibility of a lot of filmmakers. So at the heart of the video village is the monitor. Uh, I got the TV Logic LVM171S. It is a super high quality display, um, has all kinds of features like um, multiple SDI inputs that let you do um, double picture, which is what we use when we did the Ari Alexa versus C200 comparison. Um, you can apply LUTs to the image coming from the camera. Um, you can use focus, you can use zoom, you can do all kinds of interesting things. You can change the aspect ratio if you're shooting anamorphic. You can put guidelines up to see if there's picture safe. Um, all kinds of things you would want to do um, on a set as you're shooting. You can power it with mains AC power or you can run it off a V-mount or gold mount battery. I actually really like plugging it in because I also use the Video Village as my sort of charging station while I'm on set. So I have my monitor plugged in, 
Um, I have my battery charger for V-mounts and uh, LP batteries behind. Then I get the image into the monitor by using this wireless transmission system. Um, this one's called the Ghost Eye, it's from Cinegears. Uh, I power this off, I power the transmitter off the V-mount that's attached to the camera, and I power the um, receiver off another V-mount that sits next to the monitor. I also have a TV Logic um, seven inch camera monitor. So I like the fact that these two are consistent um, across the board. So what the DP is seeing and exposing for, or and what the director is seeing and adjust and directing are gonna be the same thing. I got this very cool case from SKB. Um, thank you SKB for sending it to me. Um, that it's big enough for my monitor, my charger, my cables, the transmitter, all in one place. I used to, you know, juggle 10 little tiny Pelican cases to set. It's really likely that one's gonna get lost. So I prefer this larger one that rolls, that can carry the weight of everything. And I know it's all in one place. It's a really good solution for getting your video village to and from set. If you're unable to get all the way to the video village from the camera, which if you're in a kind of built up office, you know, lots of concrete sort of wall situation is often the case. What I do is have a 50 foot um, or a couple of 50 foot SDI cables, send the image from the camera to sort of a antenna tree with the receiver on it. Then I run cables down the hall to where the video village is. If I'm directing and I'm next to the camera and the video village is for a client that I don't really want to um, have bugging me every time I turn around, I'll purposely put the video village a couple hundred feet away um, so that if they really have a note for me. They have to walk all the way to set to tell me. And by that time, we, we've usually moved on anyway. I found that it's great to make your video village as comfortable as possible if you want the people that are at the village not to turn up um, to set. It is great to put a little note on your monitor if other people are watching it, not to touch the screen. Uh, it's not a touch screen um, and you don't want greasy finger marks all over it. So it's nice to tape a little um, thing down the bottom of uh, people to keep their hands to themselves. That's my look at the video village as I use it on set. Um, it's been probably the best addition to my shooting setup in the last couple of months. Um, it's really helped me get a much better idea of what my image is gonna be. And the last thing you want on in your post-production process is a surprise that that little hair that was on the actor's face you didn't see because the monitor was too small. Well, in a video village, you totally can, you can see that image in a much closer state to what it's going to be when the viewer sees it, which I think is really important. Thanks very much for watching guys. Leave your questions in the comments. I will see you next time.